All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and I'm out at Coachella Festival Weekend 1, Day 2, and I've got all kinds of cool info on the sound systems. This is the first North American deployment of the new L Acoustics L2 system. Smaller, lighter, louder sounds, better sets up faster. And as well, we got the cool new PA system set up for the main stage. It is wind braced and way up there and more powerful than ever before. A wide variety of delay clusters and Sahara tent, new wind clamps there and just a whole bunch of cool stuff. I'm going to dive into some basics on the L2 system in this video as well as go into more depth on the member side where I'll put up a lot more detail and information. All right, so let's get into it. All right, we've got the new L2 on the left, a stack of four K2 in the middle, and an L2D on the right. We can see that the L series is uh, uh, not as tall as four K2, yet the output level is almost the same. Uh, they claim that it's exactly the same with less low end coming out of the L series. Um, the L series going down to about 60 hertz and the K2 going down to about 40. Um, so we do save some trim height which allows us to get better sight lines at the venues uh, for the same top fly position. Uh, here is an L2D on the right versus 4K2. Again, we can kind of see that there is a height differential, but the carts are the same height. We can see that that constant curvature horn down at the bottom is all merged together. And then the two upper horns there have the uh, Panaflex where you can alter the coverage from 70 degrees to 110 degrees. And you can do one side or the other side. Kind of keep sound off of the walls there, just like you can with the K2. You can also see that the horns are a bit bigger than they are in the K2 because there isn't that five inch speaker. All right, side view. Uh, there we can see the K2 stack of four is taller and we can see that the L series is deeper. Uh, the actual enclosure is deeper, but look down at the carts. The truck space that the carts use is not any bigger in the depth dimension. So they're not as wide, but they're the same depth in the truck. All right, so here I'm going to show the um, ability of the back side to clip together and the release and then the front side. So you hook the front and then slide up the back, boom, they lock in position. Um, here's the weights, 158 kilograms, uh, 348 pounds and 149 kilograms, 328 pounds and the wiring diagrams for the different um, enclosures. And they've got eight horn drivers, all on individual amps, four sets of two tens on their own amplifiers, and then four 12s, each on their own amplifier. So there's a total of 16 amps with 20 speakers there. Um, everything is eight ohms so that the cable can be thinner because if you have that 32, conductor cable. It gets thick pretty quick if you've got big conductors in it. So by using a higher impedance loads of 8 ohms, we can use thinner cable to um, get there. And um, the cable diameter, overall cable diameter is about the same, but there's only a single cable for the equivalent of four boxes. So you've reduced the amount of connections that you're dealing with compared to what you would do with a K2 system or another system that doesn't have as large of a combined box. The amplifier puts out about 12 or 1300 watts per channel into 8 ohms and um, drives each of these. And there's some power sharing too. So since the high frequencies don't use as much juice, the 12s and 10s can uh, benefit from that. So um, there's separate DSP so that um, you can change the coverage of the enclosure and multiple enclosures in sound vision while you're designing your array and uh, you know increase or decrease the um, uh, amount of vertical that you're dealing with. Cool. 
Well, here's the back panel of an L2D, and we can see that 37-pin um, connector, which they're using 32 lines of, and it's tilted a bit. I'm kind of looking up at it. It's actually downward facing, and um, there's only one connection. There's no pass-through, so each cable just hits a box, and uh, that's the equivalent of four boxes uh, for most systems. And here's a chunk of the cable and a connector there. You can see it's very it's a KCOM style. And you can see the cable, it's flexible and not overly uh, unwieldy to deal with. Here we're looking at the Panaflex horns where we can reduce the coverage on the left side or the right side or both sides. And this is handy for uh, upper parts of an array where the audience or listening area is farther away. We'd want to narrow our coverage and lower in the array where people are closer, we want a wider coverage because um, the sound isn't shooting as far. Um, here's a side view, and this shows the tilt. The one on the right here shows it tilted back, so this can be like rolled in, and you can put outriggers on here and use it as a ground stack system for situations like racetracks or sporting events where something needs to roll out and cover the audience. And this can cover a um, kind of an upward trajectory very easily. You could roll this out and um, pull these two pins on the sides there and tilt it back and then repin it in the tilted position. Pretty handy for um, covering that type of a vent. These are the rear vents for the cardioid and supercardioid settings for the 12 where the sound gets out the back and the cover plate to service the horn drivers and such from the back of the box. And the L bump, uh, you can see that there's a couple shackles to fly it side by side. And just like with the other L acoustics fly bars, there's numerous flying options. So you have the side by side, or here's the front to back, the L bar, and it um, has multiple attachment points for single point or multiple point hangs. And, it pins into the um, L bump. This is the side view of the L bump, and you can see the attachment points where it just connects to the cabinet just like how the cabinets attach to each other. Now, this is cool. That little box you see there, it's not part of the L Acoustics L series system, but it does mount on the bars, and there's various brackets, and it's a laser sight unit manufactured by Align Array and it allows you to determine what the exact angle your fly bar is hanging, which is important when calibrating these arrays and you're doing all your predictions. You determine where your array is going to point and do all your predictions based on that, but then you need to know what angle is my bar actually hanging. And this does two things. One, it shoots a laser out so you can actually see where the angle of the bar is pointed, as well as it connects to a data cable, an Ethernet cable, that um, allows you to see that on your computer and look at the sight angles of all the arrays in your system. Um, and it's really handy and powerful. And what I'm really excited about is Rat Sound has purchased this uh, company, Align Array, and we are working with Tom and Scott, who designed this unit, and to get these back on the market again, uh, Rat Sound's been buying them for years. They're wonderful products. And uh, we're in the process of manufacturing another run, and they'll be released under the Sound Tools brand, uh, maintaining the Align Array name. So let me know or let Sound Tools know if you're interested. We're going to do a run, and we think they're going to go pretty quick. But uh, we're ramping up production, and these are very, very useful. Uh, L2 rig bar. Let's watch a little video on this. And then this thing kind of goes, kind of hugs the side panels. Oh, then, okay. Then these pins go in there. Right. And it's the same pins that are on the, uh, the same pins yeah. that go on the wheel dolly and the <laughs> same thing here. So you could attach this thing to fly it uh -huh. and pull it back as well as to pull it back from the bottom position. Right, right, right. So it acts as a pullback bar yep. or a rigging bar. So you can just fly this right off the roof too. Correct. And this also, if you had two or three together, uh -huh. you could use it as like a spine. So anchor this part to something and then they could 
Got it, got way. it, got it. That's cool. And then hanging off the front just gives you a different angle. Exactly. And then since you're pulling back, so it's pretty much kind of based on a three-point hang or a two-point hang. Yep. Where you're lifting once from here yep. and then lifting another one back here exactly. to do your angle because you don't have all your angles between your boxes. Correct. So rather than muck with all that, you just do a pullback. Yep. And you wow. can go to the center position too. It's just... Yeah. Center position. There's another hole there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the bar, you've got the choice of uh, left, yeah, three-point hang or a two-point hang, one there and one in the back. Yep. Wow. Okay, cool. All right, so here's the L2 bump and L2 bar uh, info plates. Um, let's take a quick look at their load rating and such. And you can hang the L2 bar, which is 90 degrees, the L2 bump from various points to pick up dead hang angles. And um, yeah, just like the other L acoustic stuff and a view of that pullback bar, the rake bar. And here's a cool thing, it's a rotator that allows you to single point hang and once the system's up, change the horizontal angle. Let's check that out. I see, so you can hang it. On a box. On a box, yeah. So you can spin the box now. You can take your whole array and this mm -hmm. road, whatever angle it's locked at, now you can just rotate that angle. Yep. Um, rotate the azimuth of the entire array and the whole four banger will hang on there, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah, so you have the equivalent of 16K2 yep. rotatable after the motor points are in. Uh, here we're at the Mojave tent at Coachella, and we're going to walk up and take a look. It's um, one L2D underneath two L2, and coming up around the side here, we can see it's hanging. Now, these things are uh, a good 30 pounds per box, and this is the equivalent of four boxes. So that's going to be 300 probably 350 pounds lighter than the equivalent K2 system. And um, it offers more control. Here we're looking at the subwoofer setup that we're using for that tent and the infills. And we've got a staggered array. Uh, that's a combination of a delayed arc with some end fire cardioid aspects uh, with the staggering there. Here's the stage left amp rack with the four LA7.16 amps, three to power the L2 rig and one for spare, and then the LA12 axes that power the monitor rig and rest of the rig from this side of the stage. Here is the monitor position, SD12, Digico, and some wireless, and um, pretty straightforward, and the splitter system. And a front view of um, the L2 rig, three boxes per side, two L2s and one L2D per side. And then we can see the Kara infills on top of the subs there. And we'll zoom back a little bit and take a look at the same thing. Uh, and you can see the arcs on the outside for outfills as well. And here's Blondie, she was awesome. Um, and then we can see the RTA mic um, up close, the analyzer mic, smart, great show, really great to see. Um, here's the main stage, and we're off to stage left here, and we can see that the main PA is flown way up high, I mean, that's like a 73 to 75 foot trim, and it was to get the PA up over the video screens. When this concept was initially put forth um, quite a few years ago, uh, you know, I was skeptical, but also up for a challenge. And I understand the beauty of um, having all of the crafts work in harmony. I mean, we want to hear what's going on. We want to hear it well. And we also want to see what's going on. We don't want anything to interfere with each other. Is there a way that we can um, get the sound out of the way of the video without negatively impacting the audio? And um, that's what we set out to do. One of the concerns was the PA being up so high like this was the perception. You know, it's coming from above you and coverage. We also wanted to make sure with the PA farther away than it was hanging lower, that the energy level for the engineers was not dropped. A lot of the engineers have not played Coachella before, but many have as well. And the general feeling of what is acceptable or actually awesome for a big festival, sound-wise, is pretty clear to these headline engineers. We didn't get any negative reactions. We have very positive reactions from all the engineers. And uh, the energy level was excellent. 
the um, and one of the side effects of getting the PA up high like this was the angle of incidence. The sound coming down and reflecting off the ground was doing it a steeper angle. This I did not see coming into it, but it actually made the sound clearer. Uh, there's a bounce when the PA is down lower where it reflects off the ground and interferes with itself. And um, this had like a better stereo imaging and a clearer sound. Also, if you look, you can see the K2s pointing down as well as the K1s pointing forward with the K1SBs behind the K1s, increasing the amount of energy without increasing the system height and reducing some of the energy radiated at the back of the system. And here's a showtime shot where we can see how beautiful it looks to see an unobstructed view of the video screens. Um, and the PA is kind of disappears into the blackness above, yet it's still there for the people that love big PAs. It's there and it's findable. It's not hidden. It's just not in the way. And uh, I can't tell you how happy um, myself and everyone involved was with this um, cool setup. Here's another view. Uh, this is Bjork playing. Yeah, it's just the sound was great. The look was great. Uh, quite complex getting it in, getting those wind clamps in. With this PA up high like this, you know, typically if there's a wind event, the sound system would be dropped down to a safe position, but that is not an option with it up here at this height. Uh, additionally, having wind clamps is very advantageous. And so we had some custom engineered wind clamps made that um, tie off the system rigidly to the stage and increase its um, rigidity without compromising any of the safety. In fact, it increases the safety of the um, hangs. So it's uh, really exciting stuff and a lot of new innovative engineering and tech that uh, we are really excited to deploy and look forward to incorporating and expanding on into other aspects and other situations. Uh, yeah, it was really, really a fun adventure, you know, to work on something so long that was so complex and um, have it come to fruition and um, work beyond quality and expectations that we had for the festival and um, in general. Cool. Well, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, I will do more on the member side. Hope you enjoyed the tech info here and the look inside. And uh, that new L2 system is really exciting. We ordered a bunch of it and can't wait till it comes out and um, deploy it next year at Coachella on more stages, hopefully. Okay, cool, cool.